Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. You are here in the home of the slightly above average ship review. I am your host, KPZ. Today we've got a Tech Tree Spotlight on the Japanese Tier 8 Tech Tree Destroyer, the Yagumo. Little bit of history. Not that I'm trying to usurp uh, Tactic Angel's crown or anything. The Yagumo was sunk like most Japanese destroyers in the Battle of Vela La Vela, which is an island somewhere near the Solomon Islands, or maybe involved in the Solomon Islands. Anyway, it was sunk, because uh, it went up against the most decorated U.S. destroyer of World War II, Fletcher-class destroyer called the O'Bannon, 17 Battle Stars, kids. That means they were hot and heavy in the action during WW2. All right, so back to the Yagumo. Well, there are no secrets here. It is a Japanese torpedo boat. You want to use max concealment, unless you're very brave or very foolish. And you want to use these torpedoes. They do a ton of damage. These torpedoes hit like a truck, folks. Almost 25,000 damage each. Maybe if I had Reizo Tanaka fully maxed, I could say yes, they exceed 25k. But for me, they are just a titch. 104 points short of 24k on the damage meter. Max damage. All right, here is a Palo Emilio. I do not want anything to do with a Palo Emilio, although I will shoot at him because he has me spotted. And we do get a reset. We actually set him on fire. He immediately, uh, well, maybe he doesn't immediately. All right, he did damage con. All right, that's that. So I'm gonna hit my reload booster. And I'm going to put one salvo on either side of this island. That way, if he comes out on one side, he'll get hit. If he backs up, he'll get hit. Maybe this wasn't the greatest idea, but I did it anyway. And I think that's the Palomino. Oh, no, that's the Z-23. Tier 7 German position. Tech Tree Destroyer. So this is all no good. A Palo Emilio, the YOLO prince of the game. And Z-23, Smoke Sonar Combo Destroyer, both of those can eat the Agumo for lunch. So I am getting out of the Bravo cap while I still can. Alright, uh, heading out, maybe we can spot a little bit. Certainly not going to be shooting. And yeah, so I'm out of there. Out of the Bravo cap. You gotta learn to run away. Discretion is the better part of Valor when you are in. A sneaky Japanese torpedo boat. There's the Z-23. Don't want any part of that. All right, over here we've got an enemy AM Sumner. For a minute I thought there were two AM Sumners, one blue AM Sumner, but it is a Fletcher. Anyway, the Fletcher, no situational awareness, does not realize this AM Sumner is closing in on him. But never fear, little Fletcher. I am here to save you. We're going to launch one set that runs aground, half of it there. I, I'm not sure. I'm, I really don't know what the Fletcher is doing here. Uh, but I know what I am doing. I am lining up the AM Sumner with a second salvo of torpedoes. Sayonara means goodbye. First blood, devastating strike, kill number one. Like most of my matches, include the first blood. All right, Fletcher backs up into my way. I was very happy about that. Not. You know, the guy has no situational awareness, clearly, and he compounds it by pinning me up against this island here. Now, in a minute, you'll see torpedoes coming in, and I tell you, I would have been so heated if these torpedoes were able to hit me because this is all a mess of the Fletcher's own doing. Um... Yeah, maybe he was having a bad day, or maybe he's just not a very good player. You can choose which one you truly believe, because he's already dead. So I'm going to say, in my opinion, I don't think he's very good. All right. Anyway, that's that. And uh, not like I have any room to talk, but we do get away from those torpedoes before they run out of juice. And I'm, uh, you know, could have used the Fletcher over there. Fletcher could have taken out. Sorry, just trying to get my torp thing to settle down. Fletcher could have been very useful in this match. He could have taken out that Palo Emilio, could have taken out that Z-23, but instead, he's dead. Because, uh, you know, he wasn't decisive enough in what he was doing out there. 
All right, so we ran away from Bravo because we were outnumbered in there. And we did kill the AM Sumner, the only kill our team has to this point. And we are moving through Charlie and we're going to try to get into Delta to do what we do in this ship, and that is find enemies and shoot torpedoes at them. All right, and I know the Yolo Emilio is going to be uh, coming over here, so we're going to launch into the gap where I think he will be at. And uh, again, don't necessarily espouse the strategy. Um, but this warship here, this battleship, is advancing into the enemy gap. Not sure I would recommend that, at least in the beginning, but that's just me. As predicted, there is the Palo Emilio, although I think he's going to dodge my torpedoes, but I'm really trying to let my team know. There's a dangerous ship that can dev strike any other ship in the game, so please pay attention. We're going to launch one set, presuming he's going to continue his YOLO run here. Um, you know, but he's probably not, let's be honest. He's probably not. And it looks like he ran aground on the island intentionally there. Which is a smart play. You know, he does get one torpedo strike on that blue team ship. Um, but then he's going to keep coming. And so, I'm going to jam on the brakes. And I'm going to train my guns at him because I can get one good splash in. So I do get that one good splash in and set him on fire, but the Yamato gets a secondary battery hit and finishes him off as we cap out Delta. All right, I am spotted, so it's time to get the heck out of here, beat feet, unass the AO, as we say in the military, uh, get the heck out of Dodge. And so we go back, we're going into Bravo, and my goal is to put these enemy red team battleships at threat with my torpedoes and also either stop counting or maybe at some point capture out the bravo cap because that's your job in a destroyer as cool as it is to drive around and throw torpedoes and shoot a palo emilio at the end of the day do not forget that in a domination match as a destroyer your number one goals are to spot enemy ships and to capture these cap circles so we launched at the lead ship, which I believe is Yamato. Second ship might be a GK. Z-23 exiting the area, so we won't have to worry about him. Way in the back, maybe a Montana, if I'm remembering this game correctly. I had to re-record the voice over because I mistook the Fletcher in the beginning for another AM Sumner. So I was talking about friendly AM Sumners and enemy AM Sumners, and there was only one. So I felt bad, so I redid it. All right, here the Yamato is trying this broadside maneuver to try to avoid getting all my torpedoes, but he gets enough. He gets three of them. And these torpedoes, like I said, they do a ton of damage, max damage, um, or possible damage. And we are just going to let that flood go on the Yamato. I'm going to leave him be for a bit. All right, that's a uh, grosser curve first gonna line up the torpedoes here and send one rack toward the GK we get a devastating strike as we finish off the Amato devastating strike number two so pretty much any time you get torpedoes on target you are going to get a dev strike in this thing that's how powerful they are I believe they are as powerful as the Palo Emilio's torpedoes. They're that level of torpedo damage. So keep that in mind. You don't need more than one salvo on most ships. All right, here GK, as you can see, he is now a part of naval history resting on the bottom of the sea floor. Another devastating strike, kill number three. Three kills, three dead strikes. And let's go into alpha. Yeah, I could go hunting more kills. I could go hunting. Uh, maybe a, almost a Kraken or something, but I feel it is a good idea to capture this out. Maybe I will draw the Montana, which is over where I highlighted there on the minimap. Maybe I'll draw him into Alpha or Bravo and I'll be able to torp him. And if not, I'll just get a, uh, another solo base cap here to add to my accomplishments here in the Yugumo. 
So obviously, if you liked the original Japanese Tech Tree line, you're going to love the Agumo. You know, I always recommend the Japanese line starting out for new players simply because it only requires you to really do two things, and that's work on maintaining your concealment distance and using torpedoes. And I promise someday soon I will put out a how-to guide for other slightly above average players. How to play destroyers. Maybe you've never played a destroyer. Maybe you're new to the game and just stumbling across this video and you are interested in playing this game. So I will try to get that out in the next month, maybe. It's going to be a long video. I'm always hesitant to do those because of my internet situation. Uh, 20 or 30 minute video, no problem. Hour long video. The internet does not react well to that where I'm at right now. So, thus my trepidation. Anyway, there is the Montana. We're just trying to get back over into that area. Uh, as you can see, the blue team, we're only up one ship, but we are dominating in terms of the cap circles. And that is the most important thing in a domination match to capture the cap circles because then that puts the pressure on the enemy team to either come into the cap circle or kill all of you if they can't make up the point lead. Now in theory, if this Montana killed the nearby ship there and went into the cap and reversed it, in theory they could still win on points, you know, but now that it's just one ship left, and that by the way is a flint, so this is a legendary tier through seven match and someone had a failed division on our team with a flint. So a tier six ship, a flint, was able to survive in a seven through legendary tier game. So GG to the flint captain, although I decry your failed platoon as something only idiots do. So please don't do that again. Anyway, our team wins, their team loses, as you expected. Here we are on the victory screen. We had the first blood medal, three devastating strike medals, 144,934 total damage, just seven torpedo strikes to rack all that up. Three kills, a couple of cap defendeds, two solo base caps, one assisted base cap, 434,000 and change silver, 5127. Ship XP and Commander XP in the Yagumo. Maybe that's not very impressive, but this sure is. 3418 base XP, top of the board, three big kills, easily the best player on either team. If you added up the best player on our team and the best player on the other team, they would have more base XP than me, but that's it. So really strong ship if you are have a high rank concealment build. And uh, you know, I like it. I don't think it's bad. All right, in terms of the upgrade or the mods, we got aiming system mod one, propulsion mod two, concealment system mod one, and torpedo launcher mod three. All that pretty standard. And of course the Gomo is fully upgraded. Taking a look at the consumables, one charge of the torpedo reload booster, two charges of the engine boost. Of course, you could swap that out for two charges of the smoke generator. I don't recommend that. Especially at this level, you're going to be dealing with a lot of radar, a lot of sonar, carriers. To me, the smoke generator is a trap. Use that torpedo reload booster, folks. Just one man's opinion. All right, we were running this common battle booster for speed, the temporary type 1 camo, and of course, the Marine Day 21 flag. Taking a look at the stats, 13,680 hit points with our build. Got those three twin 127mm turrets, 10.7 kilometer firing range, 6.3 second reload, 22.8 second turn time. HE shells, 2150, 9% fire chance. AP shells do 2200 damage. Torpedoes, clearly superior. Two quad launchers reload every 73 seconds. Max damage, 24,896. 11 kilometer range at 71 knots. The detectability is 1,700 meters. Definitely spec into the torpedoes with the Yugumo, folks. Just one man's humble opinion. All right, moving on to the AA. I mean, this is okay, but it is nothing to write home about. 
Your main battery is dual purpose and does count as AA. Maneuverability, 38.8 knots, 640 meter turning circle, 3.6 second rudder shift time. And concealment, 4.7 on the surface, 2.6 from the air, 2.5 when firing in smoke. Nothing special about the armor viewer, so why talk about it? Instead, we'll look at the commander. Rezo Tanaka, this configuration is the configuration I recommend for all of the tech tree Japanese destroyers, at least in the original line or the eight, uh, the two tier two through tier eight line. We've got a fully max Swirsky, fully max by, and uh, these other skills are pretty self-explanatory if you have Tanaka unlocked.